Hi everyone, today we're going to talk about low frequency pistons. I want to focus on a particular frequency range and discuss what you should look for. First thing is our old fashioned, well not old fashioned, but our old favorite, the RTA. Real time analyzer or resolution time analyzer, whatever you want to call it, they're both workable. We want to focus on the 40 to 80 cycle range for purposes of this video. And I want you to look for particular behavior because that'll say a lot about the resolution of your room. It'll tell you a lot about the problems and it'll point out areas that you need to treat. So there's a lot of benefits. So we wanna observe the movement of each octave band from 40 to 80. We wanna see how they move, okay? Because you know, with the RTA, they're, they're all grouped like this, right? In different octave bands. So we wanna watch the movement of each octave band. We want to make sure that they have the same ceiling, not to exceed a certain point. And we want them to move independently, like a car, pist like pistons in a car engine. We want them to move independently, right? Do they move independently or do they move as a group? That's not what we want. We want this independent octave band movement. That's the critical part. They should move independently. They should function as pistons. We already talked about that reaching the same amplitude, top point. Each octave band must live and die on its own. Now, sometimes you'll get an octave band that goes way up and hovers. Well, that's a mode. So you can tell a lot about your room when you watch this RTA, because that's a picture. That's a visual representation of what you cannot see. That's the best way to look at it. It's a visual representation. A visual aid. Remember from school, we had visual aids. Each octave band lives and dies on its own volition. There's a separation of the fundamentals. So you're going to get a better harmonic tail on this side of 125. And that's what we're after. If these move independently, right? Separ separation of the fundamentals, higher resolution. To get this, you've got to pressure balance the room. And you do that in a couple different ways. If you're doing a new build, Use our CAW, that's that in-wall system where we build diaphragmatic absorbers between the studs. Each absorber is tuned to the frequency and the amplitude of the low frequency issue there. These issues right here. If you can't do a new build, tap, of course, type it amount position. You always gotta keep all of that in mind. If you have uh, an existing facility, then it's freestanding units. It's the carbon panel or our ACDA series, depending on what your issues are. There's two ways to do this. Two ways to get enough amount in there. You can build it into the walls or you can build freestanding units or buy freestanding units. The amount of units that you can get is always the deciding factor. Because if you've got a plus 10 or a plus 15 dB problem with our technology, with its specified and predictable and consistent rates and levels of absorption, I can tell you how much square footage you're gonna need. Each one of our units is 12 square feet by design. Because 50 square feet is a minimum on each wall surface. That's four units. That's what we find over the years that works the best. Positioning is also critical, depending on usage. If it's two channel, theater, live, whatever you're doing, it's all gonna be dependent on those issues. So look at that low end, get that RTA out. That's a great visual aid. It's a great tool to help you visualize what you're hearing and then you make the visual connection and a lot of times i'll be listening and the minute i hear something i'll look at the screen and i'll see and i'll say oh that was 50. i'll say oh that's 60. what happened to 80. you know you'll begin to to get that also a blessing and a curse you will never be the you can shift gears so to speak and listen to music without being hypercritical like i do all the time you'll get more enjoyment out of it but that's the way it all works. It's a step-by-step -step process, but you gotta get that low end functioning like an engine with the pistons moving freely, you know? So that's the goal, because then we hear everything and that's what we want. So low frequency pistons, I hope this helps. Thank you. Thank you for watching this video. And if you liked it, please give us a thumbs up. We also have a newsletter that you can subscribe to. So please do that because we offer special price discounts to only those on our newsletter. And then don't forget about our forum. 
We have started a forum on our own website where people ask questions and I usually get a chance every couple of days to look at it. There's an interchange between people on the forum and we'll give you real answers uh, on a regular basis, so that'll help you. Thank you.